Hey guys, I am the water serpent that will be appearing in Godzilla Offset Season 2. And no, I am not a pool noodle with a crocodile head attached to it. No, no, no. I am a plesiosaur. And I will be the host of... Godzilla Offset was made after a rewatch of some of the episodes of Monster Island Buddies. Yes, I watched that. This entire episode was filmed in my parents' room. Wait a second, you're... You're... You're stealing my plate! Ah! That part is actually sl a slight reference to what happens at home often. Okay, so here's a shelf. A new shelf, but um, you see this uh, T-Rex model. So these, these teeth are actually still like kind of sharp, even though they're not like sharp enough to cause a wound or anything, but like they're sharp enough to snag onto my sock and leave like a loose string which is really annoying I didn't download a single voice changer to make the cave guardians voice instead I used the a website called voice changer IO and the specific voice I used looks like this this icon uh oh spaghettios For the intro of Godzilla Offset, I actually used the original planned Spongebob theme. There is a, virgin, a version where there isn't a man shouting, Spongebob Squarepants, so I used that. You can see my computer right here. Romulagon is actually the only non-speaking character in Godzilla Offset so far. Speaking of Romulagon, to make his growls, I actually used the snail filter on Voice Changer IO. <laughs> The wires that Romulagon pulls out are actually tubes that are used to inflate bouncy balls. I used to bounce on these things a lot. Ooh. Ah yes, the MS Paint credits. Just something to know, I had a clear plan of what I wanted to do for the next three episodes. Originally, when the lights went off, Godzilla was going to say, oh, sh but then the intro would come on, and when it stops, he would say, why did it cut me off? I was going to say, oh, shoot. There's a naked robot lady who's a hydrogen bomb in disguise. Robo Musume was supposed to be the last scrapped kaiju mentioned. And Gorosaurus was going to respond, Oh, nice! In mention of Robo Musume, because, you know, naked female. But I decided that this joke was too dirty, and because I didn't have the, the um, paying version of video cam yet, I actually had to refilm the entire... Like, the entire video. 
I can't remember exactly, but Ralph, ori from what I know, Ralph originally wasn't going to even be in the episode. Hey, probably wouldn't even be in the series. Shock Mouse, you may have been wondering where Shock Mouse has been since episode 3. And let me assure you, he will play a much larger role in season 2. Oh, it's, it's time to go. Got a zap! Well, you may be thinking that the phrase, got a zap, is a reference to Sonic. Well, it is, but it's not. It's a reference to both Sonic and Jimmy Neutron. Like, as you should know, Jimmy Neutron says, got a blast, um, at the beginning of his intro. As you can see, episode 3 is the first instance of Showa Godzilla and Legendary Godzilla appearing in Godzilla Offset. Please ignore the very noticeable Chick-fil-A- My mixtapes are fire. Ew. <laughs> ah, yes. My fake cricket sounds. This is a- this is a plesior, plesiosaur guy. He was trying to say he was a crater. I'm sure none of the 15 people who watched this video got that joke. It's a reference to a 1977 movie called The Crater Lake Monster. And yes, this poster is very misleading. It's a plesiosaur. Not a, not a theropod. Not even close. I know every thought you have. I'm coming. I really should have used the Minecraft dirt sound. Oh, exactly like the first kite you on the mic. I think what happened here is that I was originally going to introduce Rodan right after Godzilla. Legendary Godzilla finishes saying Mike, but I decided to add one more sentence. Levitate was and still is my favorite song in Trunch. That's why Rodan is rapping it. Also, Honestly, I had a long, lot of trouble with that part of the intro. As for Angiris's part, Every time someone says rubber hose, my mind always comes to Swing You Sinners, which is where Angiris' scat performance comes from. Watch it. Watch it. What? Everyone's wolf OCs are always edgy. No exceptions. Why does Hook Fang have no wings? I have no idea. That's alright. Aliens is a perfect song. And it actually makes sense with Red Moon since he's an alien. Also, yes, Wingless Hook Fang is supposed to be Red Moon. I'm thinking about changing Red Moon's toy to this Death Gripper I got. See? Look, it's red. Gorosaurus sings Walk the Dinosaur because, you know, he's a dinosaur. I probably should have picked something more creative. I was really nervous about the credits because of how many toys were in this video. But I managed to extend the, uh, the canvas. This is an MS paint. God dang it. Ah, yes. This is my least favorite episode of Godzilla Offset. And trust me when I say there are a lot of secrets to be found here. I like to think Zilla is underground shooting his atomic breath up at God's, uh, legendary Godzilla's chest. Uh, Sumase. Wait, what? It means what?
The only reason I know the word Sumase is because of Cory Kenshin, my favorite YouTuber. I think I've said it before. Fortunately, I still have all of the kaiji children. So, here's the child of Mizzy, the child of Titanosaurus, who is yet to appear. I don't even know when I'm going to get a figure. A parasaur office. I have no idea what this is. What this will be. King Ghidorah. The, the um, King Ghidorah Jr. You, you saw him in the um, sneak peek at the 4th of July special. And I probably didn't know who this was going to be. Um, but now that the Titans have been revealed, I don't, I don't think this is um, Titanus Leviathan's kid. Before I get on to the next secret, I just want to tell you that I will be doing a Godzilla Offset 2019 Halloween special. I'm pretty sure it will be the next video after this. I decided to do a scarier intro for the Halloween special. Not that, not that surprising of a choice, honestly. Ew. Or it could be some other p character because literally everyone has the same voice. You see, Ralph is supposed to be the Orga of Godzilla Offset. I know I had Rodan do that and Cat Kong, but, you know, Ralph will be the fourth wall breaker from now on. So, the original plan for episode four was that the commercial break would be me in my Halloween Venom costume, which was just this mask and a black winter coat. In this costume, I would do a tutorial on how to do the default dance, but when I do the clap, I would trip and fall. That was literally the joke. That's it. That is it. But there was absolutely no time to film the commercial break, or the entire episode for that fact, before I went on the Halloween um, trip. By the way, I was sub the entire br point of the commercial break was to bridge off the portion that I filmed before the trick-or-treating and the portion after the trick-or-treating. That didn't work out, so I had to film at midnight. That was me channeling my inner Vincent Price. Prepare your boo. Uh oh. So what was originally going to happen is that um, Jacko would have said, prepare your booty, like he does, but instead of kicking him, kicking the boogeyman off, he, um, the boogeyman would have screamed, and Gorosaurus would have run away, leaving what Jacko did to the boogeyman completely up to imagination. Yes. That was supposed to be a dirty joke. Godzilla will save you. Guys, this may sound crazy, but I have experience with the paranormal. I can't explain now, but we need but stay back. This is a Category 10 Anenra. We need to stay. This thing... It can only be it can only be harmed by specials like me. The skull crawler giving ghosts categories is actually a reference to Venturian Tail, who I'm actually watching on the TV right now in between takes. Corkscrew, bye bye bye. If you want to win a fight, shout. The attack you're going to do right before you right before you do it. Q 
camera but this keyboard you see here is honestly pretty old my sister used to play piano on it well anyways did you watch the planet eater well, of course i did i voice acted i voice acted for that so in godzilla offset the godzilla movies do exist and what happens in the e episodes take place in between filming. The show's subtitle is Offset for a reason. Both Galarma and Gaharha are in the kaiju. The Gaharha hair sample is actually my own hair that I picked out. <coughs> I don't know the name of the song in Mechagodzilla's introduction, but the animation meme it comes from is called Bipolar. Uh. Hey. The opening of episode 6 occurs immediately after episode 5 ends. Speaking of episode 6... The distorted pose that Mechagodzilla is in, I actually made that, like, a while before I started filming, and I just sort of left it there. Hey, my, my father used to really lo love human sacrifices for dinner. This line is a reference to Rodan eating the ejecting pilot in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Because, remember, that footage was revealed before Cat, Cat Kong Part 1 was released. The species name Nazura is a reference to the precursor of Gamera, which was supposed to be a movie called, if I'm right, Giant Horde Beast Nazura. It would, it would be about giant rats invading a Japanese city. The Graveyard of Warriors is what you think it is. Yes, that is our cat's litter box. My name is Dutalios. So you might be wondering, why did I name this Nazura after a fish rat when there is clearly no fish in him? Well... I was brainstorming name ideas because I obviously couldn't call him just Nazura, and I just randomly ended up going to Dutalios. So, Aaron and Armin's names weren't originally supposed to be Attack on Titan references. Like I said, I was brainstorming on Nazura names for these three. And I settled on Aaron, and I was like, wait a second. Arigato, our cat, is actually a she, but since Cat Kong is said to be a he in the book, I decided to call her a he. No assuming here. So this Atomic Breath stand-in is actually... A cat, a broken cat toy. There used to be a mouse-like object that was hanging off, but it, but it fell off. I'll tell you more later. This sort of airstrike sequence is actually a reference to a thought I had back when the visual of Godzilla firing his atomic breath into the sky came out. I was wondering what happened to Breath once he stopped firing, and one of my theories is that maybe it just, like, comes down in some random place. Here's a little fun fact. Arigato wasn't really cooperating at this point. Um, so, like, I don't really know why I didn't expect this. I mean, she doesn't even know what acting is. She's a cat. And um, this is why she gets like little to no actual screen time from when she notices Aaron, what this shot is from, 
until when Mafra goes, I don't know, Solar Super Saiyan. I ha I sw I swore to to never use this f use this power again after after me and Leo's battle with the with the with Grand King Dora. But I suppose I'll have to unleash it again. The encounter that Mafra mentions, I will be showing that in season two. Mafra's line before she turns solar, I still don't have a name for this form, but uh, that line, that was actually put through a Shakespearean translator. So in the final battle between Mafra and Cat Kong, originally, a Nazura battle was to help her, but the Nazura battle toy broke, so... This really isn't a secret, it's just me letting you see me harassing our cat, basically. Before I cut this shot down, you could actually see Arigato run away once it gets close. And when she ran away is right where it cuts. The whole thing with the Cat Kong worshipper wasn't even planned. I just decided to add it in. Originally, the episode was going to end with Godzilla, God, the two Godzillas carrying off Mafra, like immediately after she crashes down. And the final secret is that originally I was going to have to say no animals were harmed in the making of Cat Kong, but one was harassed. Okay, listen, before I end the video, I am really glad to get this through. This video took almost a month. I started filming in on September 24th. Yeah. And, um, honestly, that's because I was just being lazy, and I didn't even resume production until, what is it, uh, the, I think the 9th? Yeah, the 9th. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this MIV ripoff, this ripoff of a video series done by the person I ripped off. And, uh, well, not real. Sign art.